Hello everyone and welcome to this demonstration of how you can use Delta Lake in Databricks and you can also use Delta Lake in Synapse Azure so because Delta Lake is open source so that's brilliant um, so you can either use whatever machine you want to use to run it either this the Spark cluster on Databricks or the Spark cluster on Azure uh, Synapse so we'll get straight to it what we've got today is some data let's just say it's all made up data these are fake names uh, they do not relate to anybody in real life. I just made them up. And we've got seven customers we want to record into like a CRM database. Now, we've got all of our columns here. There's quite a lot of columns. At the end, there's an interesting column which we'll talk about, which is the delete column. Um, and that's just an indicator for us to either delete the customer or not. And so let's see how we can then get this file in. And then we've got incremental files. So that's the 20th of October, 2022. And then every day after that, we've got some changes to the data. Either somebody updates a record or someone wants to get deleted. So how do we do this in Delta Lake? Well, Delta Lake has made it quite easy for us to do Delta changes. So this is like an incremental load type situation. Um, <clears throat> first of all, what we'll do is run. Uh, I like to use widgets because we use Data Factory to pass in parameters. So the first step is just to remove all the widgets. And then we'll say, okay, Want a widget that says what is the file name because remember we want to grab the file names from here so let's just say we're supplying these um, from the data factory and we're pushing it to the notebook and we say okay please go and grab um, <coughs> these files from the storage account and these files actually sit physically on my storage account so you'll see that um, this is my storage account and these are my files over here now let's just run this next command and then you'll see that the file name widget pops up on the left hand side here and then um, we're going to set a parameter um, data file name to that widget <clears throat> right so we'll imp import some libraries here um, and that's you can just you know, this notebook will be available on my blog which is um, it's called rags to riches data but I'll set I'll put that in the link in the description of this video and then there'll be um, the blog will be called how to create your first delta lake house incremental flow and then the demo files are here so you'll inside of that <clears throat> you'll get the notebook the uh, databricks notebook as well as all the files um, of, of the data so then you can try this yourself um so let's run the next command which is going to be creating the database um and in the database itself uh once you've created it it ends up over here on your in your catalog explorer and you'll see that we've got a database called Delta on Databricks. So this is our database, but it's got no table. So what we're going to do next is create a table on the database. And this is a, a strictly typed schema for this table. Um, in your project, you might you might have a strictly type um, a schema for every table, which is quite normal, but you can also use metadata driven to make it more dynamic and less code heavy. But this in this example, we're using um, the strictly type schema for the table. And then we'll create this schema, and that schema is obviously based on all the column names you'll see on top. So we've got all these column names, quite a lot of them, like 26, 27, 28, 28 columns. That's a lot of columns. Um, and then we will give them like types. We've got timestamps, we've got strings, we've got integers, and such. Um, I'm also separating the uh, into a partition just to make it easier down the line. And that partition is based on the year, the month, the day, the hour. <clears throat> and we'll see how we do that in a minute and how we get that out of the uh, file name. In fact, the file name itself has got uh, year, month, day, and hour there. So it's got everything inside the, the name of the file. So that's sort of like metadata if you think about it. Um, the next thing, so to, 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 I think we didn't run this one yet. So I'm going to run this file now. Once you run it, um, it's going to write a table to your database, uh, we call it a database, but it's like a database on Databricks. And you'll see if I refresh this now, there should be a table inside of that Delta on Dbricks. Okay, so there it is, contacts. And you can see the structure of contacts there. If we look at it, uh, the overview, and there it is. So we've got dates, strings, dates. String. So yeah, all good. Now, going back to this, we create our table. It's an empty table, nothing in it. This is the this is the nice part about grabbing it now from the uh, this is my storage account. This is my container. If you remember, 
my container is Delta Demo, and that's my storage account. This is the Azure Storage Explorer. And then, so that's the, I mounted it, by the way. So I mounted it, uh, that storage account to my Databricks. That's why I'm not using that first line of code. <clears throat> so I mounted it there. So this is the same thing. That's the mount. Uh, this is the alias for that storage account. And then the subfolder is called context delta this. So you depends on how you set yours up. Um, mine is, so it's delta demo context delta this. Uh, that's my structure. So you can just put whatever. This is the subfolder. That's your container. And then what we do is I just split the file name um, into year, month, day, and hour, just so we can partition it. But we're not really talking about partitioning today. We're just talking about how we're going to use the, the Delta changes. So we want to know from the next file that comes in, what's the new change? New customers or customer wants to be taken off, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so let's run this block of code. Uh, remember that this is the 20th. So this is going to change down here. It's not going to be two customers. It'll be seven. Um, and the reason is because the 20th has got uh, seven customers, right? So there you go, you have seven customers there. And if we look at the names, we've got Aaron, Abraham, Jacob, Jade, Liza. So let's get back to that and have a look. There they are. So those are the seven names. And now, remember, there's no data yet in the context table. We want to um, put that data in. So what we're going to do. Um, and by the way, you can write a, this is a managed table. So it's managed by Databricks. You don't see it on the storage account. But if you wanted to write to the storage account physically, then all you've got to do is set the path. So here's the path. Um, and you can say, oh, write to this, uh, the, to the mount, but create a new um, subfolder called a cleanse staging or whatever you want to call it. And then write that. There, but we're not going to write this to an external table. It's going to keep it as a managed table in data, uh, Databricks. Uh, so let me run this. And then you'll see in a second. So now it's taking the data frame from above, which is this, the seven rows of data, and it's writing it to the, the Databricks table. So if we refresh now um, on this next tab, <clears throat> we'll see that. He has a sample there. Here we go. Oh, it's empty. Okay, so oh, I know why. It's because <laughs> we haven't run into the, uh, that's into the staging context. So if we refresh that and uh, go like this, here it is, staging context. <clears throat> we should see seven rows of data. So normally you would want to stage things um, because you don't want to write directly to your live table. You always want to put it in a, in a landing table first, like a staging table, and then write it. And I'll show you what that, means now because we're going to use the built-in function which is the merge function in delta lake which is really cool it's very similar to a sql merge statement so um, the, the concept is very much the same so what we'll do is we'll say okay um, let's create a data frame called uh, data frame existing and then data frame new so the data frame new would be what's coming in from staging and the data frame existing is what's actually in the context table currently there's nothing in the context table but there is data, the seven rows of data in the staging contact. So what we're going to do then is say, all right, uh, this new data frame, the well, data frame new, uh, 2DF, and I think we have to use 2DF for the reasons of the merge and the alias. But anyway, just don't worry about that too much. Um, and then I also had to cast um, some of these columns. I was having some problems with the data, but I had to just cast them explicitly. So these are just cast for the birth dates, the deceased dates, so all the date and timestamps that we have there. And then here's the magic merge command. So we're saying, all right, now let's um, get the existing uh, data, which in this case at the moment is blank, and we're going to merge it to the new data that's coming in, but based on constituent ID. Right? This constituent ID is... Uh, every I think of it as an identification number for a person. So every person has an identification number and these are all unique across people. So this is your primary key. So so now we we match and we say, okay, does the this constituent ID exist in the existing data? Uh, if it um, if it matches, then do an update. So this is a update statement. But if it does not match, then do an insert. So this is inserting insert data, right? In this case, it's going to be an insert because there's no there's no data on the table. It's the first time we're running it. 
um, and, and that's it. So we'll talk about updates in a minute and delete. So let's run this. And then we'll see. It's running there. It shouldn't take too long. There it is. Done. <clears throat> now you can do a, a little select. So now I'm going to actually go to my live table and run this. Should have seven rows of data. There you go. Seven rows of data. And by the way, if you want to start from scratch, you can use the uh, code down the bottom. <clears throat> Just drop in the tables and drop in the database and you can start over. <clears throat> so we've got seven rows of data there. Now let's say the next day happens and you've got a sort of scheduled automated process. And now the next day comes in as the 21st of October and you want to run that data. Let's go look at that data quickly. So we'll look at what's going to be changing on the 21st. Open this, open Excel. <clears throat> so wait for that to load up. There it is. So we've got um, Eliza is a person here who wants to be deleted from the CRM database. So we've got a flag of delete yes here. And um, Jacob Adams is an existing person and wants to change their email address. So let's just look at the data first on Databricks. And we'll go to, so here's um, this Jacob and his email address currently is, oh, just scroll to the right hand side, um, whatever, whatever at sky.com, right? So these, these are not real email addresses, just fake. So nothing real here. And you'll see that in the update, so this can be an update for the, the next day, 21st of October, it's got like 4051 TTT. So it's a different email address that Jacob wants to give us. Um, maybe he's changed email address or something. And then the, the two people that want to be deleted are Abraham, Ashley, and Eliza. Because they got flags of yes. So, you know, maybe some upstream system like your CRM system says, hey, um, customer on our website said they want to be deleted. So let's delete it from our database. And we're like, yeah, no problem. We can do that. So going to the top again, I imagine you can feed this in from an, some automated process. We're going to do um, that. So we say it's the next day, it's the 21st. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run everything. Um, I'm just going to click on the run all button because we've seen that all now. And as it's now we see that we, it's run already. That's how quick it was. And we can see that those are the three entries for the next day. And then if we come down to the select here, we should see that um, email address. There it is. And you can see that TTT or Adams has changed in the database. And, the, and remember, this is the live table. This is the context table, not even the staging table, right? So this is all, it's done the job properly. And now we've only got five people because you remember that Eliza and um, Abraham wants to be deleted and they've gone. So we used to have seven customers. Now we've got five customers. And now I'm sure you can see how this is all working now and it's working pretty well. And let's just do one more. I mean, I know I've got some more data there, but let's run the next day. Um, and we'll just run everything here. And the next day's update, uh, let's have a look at what it looks like. Um, the next day would be, oh, we've got some new people. Uh, I think we've got some new people. I think Adriel was existing, but Roland's and Bo on new, right? So Adriel must have had some kind of change. Maybe I think it was a, a date of birth or something. I can't remember what it was, but there's a change for Adriel and there's two new people. So what we expect is we had five people now in a database. Then we're probably going to have seven because we've got two new customers coming in. So let's have a look. Um, Adriel. Oh, I ran that already. So the 22nd. Now going back down to the select. So there's Bo and there's uh, Roland's, I think we had. Yeah. And then going back to that. Um, so, yeah, um, that's the change is done. So now, I mean, you can see how brilliant that is, how quick it is to update this database. And remember that this is a managed database, managed table in Databrix. Um, when your cluster stops, um, then your database disappears. So remember that uh, it, it, it runs on the cluster itself. Um, so if you want this 
database to be reachable through Power BI and such, the cluster has to be running. So that's where managed uh, t tables live. If you want it to be an external table, remember you set the path. Uh, you set the path over here. So you say, okay, I want it to be in this state. And then you can actually write to your physical place where you can go and you know, uh, point your, your Power BI to that path. And then you wouldn't have to have your cluster running all the time. So there's just, but it wouldn't be a, a managed database in that instance. Um, and you wouldn't be able to run uh, SQL over that Delta. So that would just be uh, Parquet files. So it, it'll be Parquet files in a storage account, <clears throat> but you can do a lot with that. Don't get me wrong, um, but it just wouldn't be treated like a database as it were, because there would be no engine running for you to run SQL queries on it. Like we do over here, you can see we're running a SQL query on that database and the table and because it's, it's behaving like a SQL database, right? Um, on the on database cluster. So the cluster has to be running in order for us to query from that managed database. That's it for now. Um, thanks so much for watching. And remember to check out the blog, Rags to Riches Data. Um, I'll just show you what that looks like, rags to riches data.com. And I haven't posted it yet, <clears throat> but it'll be the next blog on here. Um, today's uh, 23rd of uh, April, 2024. And I should be getting that up there pretty soon. And then you can see, um, you can download the, the, the Databix notebook as well as the, the files and then try it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Clint Grove. Subscribe, tell your friends about this if they want to know how to use uh, Delta Merge in Databricks.